While doing countless hours of research, I just stumbled on some information that's going to absolutely blow your mind and change the way you think about investing going forward completely. So you're not going to want to miss this. Now I know almost everywhere you look on YouTube, it seems like there's countless videos lately with a scary title predicting that the markets are a bubble and you're about to lose everything you have invested. And to be fair, this video's thumbnail and title are probably no different. Cause let's face it, fear gets clicks. But here's how this video is different. My personal promise to you is that if you watch this video in its entirety, by the end of it, you'll have a far better understanding of what exactly is happening right now and what's likely going to happen based on the patterns that are starting to form just like they have formed in every bubble throughout recorded history. And with this information, you'll be far better equipped to know what you should do with your investments and how to be prepared for what's to come. Also, I respect your time, so I'm going to try my best to jam pack as much of the most essential information in the shortest amount of time possible. So here's the format. First, what's going on with the economy and are we in a bubble? Second, what patterns are starting to form that have appeared in every bubble recorded in history? And third, what you should do and how you can be prepared for what's to come so that instead of losing money, you can capitalize on the situation and come out on top. So let's get right into it. So first, what's going on with the economy? Let's keep this quick. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that over the past few months, the majority of businesses have had to deal with an extreme amount of hardships, to say the very least. And the countrywide lockdowns have forced some businesses to shut down completely. And while others were allowed to remain open, even those are only making a small portion of the revenue that they were making before. So it goes without having to say that this has caused the economy as we know it to absolutely plummet. And we are currently in the midst of one of the worst economic downturns since the Great Depression of the 1930s. And with that, economic activity has dipped drastically, which has caused over 100,000 small businesses to have now permanently closed their doors and has resulted in millions of Americans to lose their jobs in the past few months alone. And yet with all this craziness going on, the stock market continues to soar to new heights seemingly almost every single day. This is both to the amazement and bewilderment of almost every single investor everywhere, except maybe Jerome Moneybags Powell, the current undefeated champion of printing money and whooping bears asses. Most tender salmon, which is exactly what we at John West want. By the way, real quick, if you appreciate the humor and you're enjoying the video or you just want to help support the channel, please consider hitting that like button because in all seriousness, these videos do take a really long time to research, record, and edit. So I'd really appreciate it if you could just tap that like button. Thank you so much. Now all jokes aside, a lot of investors have justly pointed out that since the Fed is intervening in such a massive way, and when I say massive, I mean absolutely ginormous. For example, from 2008 to 2015, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet went up about $3 trillion. And now, with us just a couple of months into 2020, the Fed has already printed nearly the same amount of money that they did in a seven year time span in just a few months. So they are basically trying to do everything humanly possible to not allow the economy to fail. But that begs the question, what happens now that the value of asset prices are becoming undeniably disconnected from the fundamentals or the underlying real economy itself? So I think we can all agree that there is without question a major gap between the real economy and the stock market right now. And that gap is only widening the more the Fed intervenes which by all accounts means that we are currently in what most would describe as the proverbial bubble. And I acknowledge that it does indeed look more and more like we are in a bubble. So now let's get into what absolutely blew my mind and what's the second part of this video. What are the patterns that are starting to form that have formed in pretty much every bubble recorded in history? And it's happening again right now in front of our very faces, right under our noses. And yet most of us are not realizing it. And that's because we all think 
that this time is different. And this is a phenomenon that has been studied throughout the ages countless times because it happens over and over and over again. And yet we never realize it until it's too late because this time is definitely different, right? So first, we have to understand what are the stages of a bubble? Because whether we're talking about the dot-com bubble, the 2008 housing bubble, or even more recently, the Bitcoin bubble, they all followed a very similar pattern, which is perfectly depicted on this graph. So as you can see, a typical bubble has four stages. The stealth phase, the awareness phase, the mania phase, and finally, the blow off phase. Now I'd argue that we are clearly currently in the mania phase of this chart, which if you notice, is not too far away from when the bubble burst. Now the mania phase is classified as when everyone and their mama starts to notice that the prices of assets are going up and bam, out of nowhere, FOMO starts to hit us hard, which is the fear of missing out. And as humans, let's be honest, it's a hard feeling to fight off. So we jump in for the quote unquote investment opportunity of a lifetime. Logic is thrown out the window and the expectations just start to become that this money train ain't stopping anytime soon. AKA Jerome Money Pal will keep printing that cash money forever. And thus stocks will of course continue to rise and investing now is a no brainer. But of course, we all know how this story plays out. No matter how hard the Fed tries to intervene, the economy and the stock market can't keep heading in such different directions for too long. Something has to give. But let's dive even deeper into specifics. So here's a graph of the dot com bubble and notice how the charts look almost identical. Now, as I mentioned, a major indication of being in the mania phase is when logic and rational thinking gets thrown out the window. Well, during the dot com bubble, professional investors were saying things like, we're in an environment where the company doesn't have to be successful for us to make money. And even senior executives of companies themselves were quoted as saying the last thing I want is to be profitable because then I wouldn't get the valuation of an internet company. Now that doesn't sound very sustainable, does it? But of course, hindsight is always 2020. So let's instead fast forward to today. Now is there anything happening right now that reminds us of this crazy illogical form of thinking? Well, how about the fact that it seems the quickest way to have your stock price double nowadays is for companies to declare bankruptcy. Look no further than JCPenney or Hertz, who infamously declared bankruptcy just a few weeks ago and then saw the stock price skyrocket over a thousand percent from trading at 46 cents to more than $5 a share within a matter of days. Now the important part to realize here is that when a company declares bankruptcy, the stock is essentially worthless because even if they somehow manage to pull off a miracle and pay off all of their debt and they do end up surviving, what typically happens in that scenario is that the company will cancel their existing shares and instead issue completely new shares. And this is exactly what United Airlines did after going bankrupt in 2002 and then coming back four years later in 2006 when they exited bankruptcy and their new shares went public. And in doing so, simultaneously pretty much screwing all of their old shareholders and leaving them with absolutely nothing, zilch. So right now, people are investing left and right in companies that are declaring bankruptcy thinking that they're about to strike gold like it's the hot new trend in town. So they're basically willingly dumping their money into stocks of failing companies that have no long-term value whatsoever. But if that's not crazy enough for you, how about this? Hertz was equally as shocked that people were still interested in buying their worthless stock, but quickly pivoted to how can we exploit this absurd situation even more. So they decided to move forward with selling $1 billion worth of shares in what would have gone down in history as the first ever IBO, Initial Bankruptcy Offering, Bruh. which I'm not going to lie, was low key genius on their part to try to do it. But luckily for Robin Hood investors, they were blocked by the SEC because they basically would have just been straight up scamming people. 
I mean, come on, son, you, you just can't make this stuff up. So I think that just about checks off every box of the logical form of thinking that is commonly seen in the mania phase of a bubble. So now that we have established that, let's move on to part three, which in my opinion is the most important part of all this, at least for us retail investors, which is if we are indeed in a bubble and we're caught deep in the mania phase, what should we do now and how can we be prepared for what's to come? So what you have to remember is that just because we're in a bubble doesn't necessarily mean that stock prices are going to collapse anytime soon. Warren Buffett famously said that bubbles could take years. Just look at the housing bubble that ran up from 2003 to 2007. That took years. Or the dot-com bubble that continued to roar higher and higher from 95 to 99 again. That took years for those bubbles to burst. So I am by no means recommending that you rush to take your money out of the stock market. In fact, I've seen many people claiming to have taken out all of their money from the stock market back in May because they were sure that the bubble was just about to burst. But nope, all that ended up happening is they missed out on a whole bunch of gains because the markets have continued to just go higher and higher. So with that in mind, trying to time the market 99% of the time is extremely foolish and most of the times you're going to be wrong and it's going to cost you a lot of money. So this is why I am a huge believer in that the best way by far to grow your money over many years is to bet on the markets going up in the long term. And we have over 100 years of history to back that up. So that still begs the question, what should you do right now? So in my opinion, the absolute two best things that you can do right now is to get your mindset plus your financials right and then also to make sure to clean up your investment portfolio. By this, I mean two simple things. One, if you're investing in the markets right now, you have to be mentally and financially prepared for another crash to happen. And I'm talking about your entire investment portfolio might all of a sudden go down 20 to 30 plus percent in a matter of a week. And the reason it's so important to be mentally prepared for the possibility of that happening is that when and if that does happen, you are calm and you know exactly what you're going to do. Because if you're not mentally prepared ahead of time, trust me, that's when you make stupid decisions driven by emotions, like selling out of all your positions at massive losses, like so many people did back in March. And look how that turned out for them. Now, this also means that you shouldn't be investing money right now that you will likely need to use within the next year or two. Because if the markets do crash, the last situation that you want to be in is one where you need to take money out of your investment portfolio just to be able to pay the rent or buy groceries. Because again, that's going to force you to have to take losses that you should not have to take if you were financially prepared. So only invest money right now that you do not need to use anytime soon. This will put you in a very strong position if the markets do crash to capitalize. And two, you have to clean up your portfolio. I am a huge proponent in primarily only investing in category disrupting companies and they make up at least 75%, if not more, of my investments. And by that, I mean companies like Amazon, Apple, Square, Tesla, etc. Because innovative, disruptive companies thrive and often even founded and started during some of the worst recessions in history. So those are the kinds of companies you want to be holding onto right now because those are the companies that will make it out of this and absolutely thrive no matter what in the long term. So with that being said, that's it for this video guys. But if you found any value in this video at all, and I hope you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on that notifications bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, I love talking to you guys and I always reply to every single comment. So let me know your thoughts on the current state of the market or what stocks you want me to talk about next. And as always guys, especially if you make it to, made it to this point of the video, I have so much love for you guys. You guys are the real MVP and I hope you all have a beautiful, blessed day. Peace.